to the phones. Mike in uh, St. Louis. Glad you called, sir. How are you doing? Hi, Rush. You know, I want to talk about this Twitter thing. Sure. Um, I remember when uh, Obama was, was he in the White House visiting with the Twitter guy, and he was endorsing Twitter and talking about how great it was. And I just had my suspicions. I thought, why is he endorsing Twitter? And and maybe now my suspicions are answered when I find out that they're using it to advance some sort of leftist agenda. Well, Does that make yep. sense to you? Did you have the same kind of suspicions when Obama came forward? No, they were not suspicions. It was knowledge. <laughs> that makes sense. You know, but it took a while for that to be confirmed. I mean, that was a while ago. I'm not a Twitter user. I don't follow it or anything. But... Um, I just thought, how are they going to turn this to their advantage? And it looks like they may have. Twitter, by the way, is a piker compared to what Google was doing for Obama and the Democrats. You know, Google is the number one search engine in the world. And you know, we can talk about how Twitter is doing things with its uh, feeds and its bots and, and uh, other ways to stymie conservative speech. But you go look at what Twitter was doing. Uh, in, in their search engine, promoting Obama, promoting Hillary, ripping Trump to shreds. I mean, you, if, you, if, if you searched Hillary, just as an example, mm -hmm. uh, on, on Google, you would get a list of some of the most glowing, wonderful, oh, my God, she's like a goddess stories. You search Trump, and every one of those stories is about what a reprobate he is, what a near rapist he might have been, how he abused women, how he's dumb and stupid. And in spite of all of this and what Twitter has been, Trump still won. This is why so many of them are beside themselves in the swamp. They had every advantage known to exist. And every one of those advantages was deployed. Every bit of power that they had was deployed and arrayed against Donald Trump, and he still won. Google practically had an office in the West Wing. Google had people conspiring with Obama on analytics as part of campaigns. Google, I mean, Eric Schmidt, take a look at the number of times Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google, had visits in the Oval Office. Obama and Silicon Valley, Obama and the tech leadership were inseparable. And, and m most of it was due to ideological similarities. And I, tr I tried to explain this yesterday. I had a story that uh, Jonah Goldberg at, at National Review, he couldn't understand why the American left is so exercised about net neutrality, because what he knows is that net neutrality, getting rid of Obama's net neutrality rules is going to result in cheaper internet service for a lot of people. He couldn't understand why these people are threatening the life of the chairman of the FCC. He said, I can understand it if they're threatening the life of the FDA guy who won't let a cancer cure out, but the FCC. So I tried to explain to the left, the Internet is the primary means of controlling everything. They want to regulate it and own it. It is theirs. To your average, ordinary leftist millennial, the Internet is their air and water. And I'm not, I'm not just being analogous, folks. We talk about people addicted to their screens. You heard the latest that you know, a bunch of Apple shareholders are demanding that Apple do something about all the people addicted to their screens. It's not the screens they're addicted to. It's the Internet they're addicted to. The phones and the iPads just happen to be the vehicle that allows them to get there. They, these kids, these young millennials, do, you've heard the number 70 percent of them are socialists. 70% of 18 to 34 age group are socialists. Vast majority of them love Bernie Sanders. They don't even know what socialism really is. To them, socialists mean social justice, fairness, equality. They're so ill-educated, they don't know that socialism leads to communism, which leads to walls and murder. They don't know about the numbers of deaths in the Soviet Union and China and in Cuba. They don't know that. It's not what they're taught about socialism and communism. They want their people. They've also been told how evil corporations are. Folks, sometimes I read these people. Do not doubt me. They hate. They hate anybody that charges them money to go on the Internet. 
they hate. Comcast is the number one most hated corporation in the country to this group. AT&T is second. Veri- no, Verizon second, AT&T and third, and lump every other internet service provider in there. They despise them because they charge them money. They they also despise them because they've been raised being taught about the evils of corporations. Look at what do you think their college professors are telling them about these corporations. You look at the Democrat Party enemies list, and it is whole industries. It's the pharmaceutical industry. It's big box retail. It's the telecommunications industry. It's big oil, big tobacco. They are hated. And these kids have been educated and raised to properly hate these things, thinking they're out to harm customers, rip their customers off, in some cases kill their customers. And so it was great when Obama had control of the Internet because Obama was what? Well, he was fair. And Obama was going to make sure that those renegade conservatives didn't have as much access because that's what it meant to them. Net neutrality was making sure that there wasn't another talk radio takeover of the Internet or a Fox News takeover of the Internet. Obama in charge of the Internet. Google in charge of the Internet to a lesser extent. Well, they idolize those people. Those people are wonderful and great, and only wonderful things could happen from government regulating the Internet. It's like government was in charge of their air and water. And now Obama's gone, and Obama's rules are gone, and they think they're going to lose their Internet. However, that manifests in their minds. But it's, it's, it's really, at its simplest, it's nothing more than a bunch of people who want the government in charge of everything because that is where their enemies get punished. And to these people, having their enemies punished is nirvana. And Obama, with net neutrality, was expressly set up to punish their enemies, whoever they are, conservative websites, Conservative streaming sites, major internet service providers, telecommunications companies, you name it. They believed that Obama was going to hold those people accountable. Obama was going to make it fair. And Obama was going to make sure the internet remained equal. So now here comes Trump and Ajit Pai, and they're, they're simply erasing Obama's regulations of the Internet, which were only in place for two years, and they're in abject panic because their air and water, they think, is being taken from them. Do not doubt me, folks. For a year, I have been reading the most ridiculous rantings, lengthy pieces with these people explaining how the world is going to come to end if net neutrality is eliminated. If you... When I say it's their air and water, I'm not exaggerating. The Internet is how they live. It's how they communicate. It's it's how they are employed. It is everything. It's the focal point, the centerpiece of their lives. And they don't want their political enemies having anything to say about it. And they think eliminating net neutrality puts their enemies in charge. And their enemies are going to harm them, making it too expensive for them to use or making it so that Netflix is able to charge them 10 times what they're charging now or whatever horrors they imagine. Because they haven't been steeped in the workings of free market capitalism. All they've been done, all all they've had is capitalism taught to them as the end of civilization, the end of fairness, the end of equality, the end of prosperity. This whole net neutrality fight, when you, if you could, if you could boil it all down, is the fundamental example. It's the best illustration you could get of totalitarianism versus freedom and the people that want totalitarianism because it makes them feel safe and secure. They are as exercised about this as anything they've been exercised about Trump. Anyway, a brief time. We'll get to the Twitter things. I didn't mean to shortchange him on his Twitter comments, but uh, O'Keefe, Project Veritas, 
secret videos revealing all kinds of things that, again, shouldn't surprise anybody. Going on with a group that loves Obama. Obama. 